The Science Weekly, an industry pundit podcast about the tech and innovation of the 21st century. An open discussion between industry experts to uncover how emerging technologies can help solve current societal issues. Welcome to Science Weekly podcast. Uh, thank you for accepting our offer from being here. Um, we have George Wu with us today. Uh, can you please tell a bit about yourself? Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. I don't know um, about myself. I I'm in the define myself, I guess, as an entrepreneur. Like for from now on, for the last like eight nine years, uh, I've been involved in. I was just saying to you guys now offset. So like my last corporate job was in FMCG. We moved on then into full uh, tech space, web, mobile. And for the last three years, been bu- been building like our new company now, which is a food technology company called The Mighty Kitchen, where we make chicken from plants. Amazing! I know you, so um, yeah. <laughs> you're you're one of the few that is doing great stuff, and you know you're silently doing amazing things in the background yeah. in Cyprus. Um, and finally, we can share with some people. But yeah. you went through marketing to food tech. How? What? Yeah, yeah. I, get, I mean. I don't know, like you, it's this thing that, that we say, like uh, everybody kind of has their, their function. Everybody knows how to do something well. And then you find people who are better than you at doing different like other things and put those people together and you can make something cool. So I would say like that was my my space, my background personally is like you said, you know, but it's uh, operations, marketing, business development more than anything, a little bit of product management and then just really kind of after I had my like six year uh, adventure building a couple of companies like learning a lot um, going through the process I kind of said realistically where do I want to dedicate the next 10 years at least like of my life to and this space uh, this space is kind of founded on a few really important issues for me as well I think this is why I kind of shifted out into this space because I think just this whole like uh, centered around human health, environmental uh, issues, and then animal welfare as well. These three things come together, I think, in the food tech space. So, yeah, we can just do a lot better in the way we we produce food as, as a society, as, as countries and so on. And this is where we come in and we're trying to do that now. So, yeah, I mean, that's kind of how... I guess I moved into this space and found a bunch of good people to surround myself with and try and build something cool. You you guys have been developing this solely in Cyprus. Like, and how, how long did it take you? Yeah, so we we started late late 2018, early early 2019, I guess. And I came together with uh, with Luzo and my co-founder like er, early 2019. Um, so it's a combination of stuff, right? We yeah we've We've done like 95% of our R&D like here locally. We've collaborated for sure because it's, uh, I mean, like we well, collaborated in the sense that we've used space outside of Cyprus. So uh, did some some early stage trials out in Denmark. Our manufacturer now that we work with to scale up the product is uh, in the Netherlands. So like we have that contact with, with again with companies that can help push us forward like where needed but the majority of stuff everything pretty much from scratch has been done here and we had this question uh, I remember a few weeks ago we were, they were saying like who's the they're saying how did you become experts in this space we're like nobody's <laughs> an expert in this space the space is so like young it's so raw like when we started there were like a hundred people in the world who who could not who could construct something like this but who could help push you forward a few stages and luckily for me as well like I said my my co-founder Liz is super smart um helps and she picks <laughs> up stuff like this like from the beginning we had an idea how to get started we had some nudges in the right direction and then just like a a shitload of like effort and focus and just like you know spinning out products some were average some were decent now they're great (laughs) so it's just been that process of building something out and getting to the stage we are now 
Yeah. It sounds like a very fun product to test as well. Like yeah. I think you've been eating a lot the previous yeah. <laughs> couple of years. Everyone's been eating. <laughs> it's the difference with people said this to me as well. Like, what's the difference between a tech product and with it? And they were talking about like iterations and testing. I said with this with testing, everyone gets to eat. You know, it's uh, <laughs> it's more fun than sitting around like a, a screen and kind of watching somebody click on buttons. But at the same time, it takes longer to to set up like an iteration loop. So. You with the, with our um, with our digital stuff like you send out a link, try it out. You get them to maybe film themselves using it, and it's fun, and come back and analyze it. With this, it's like we do full blown. I mean, like we do taste testing now as well with with uh, with distributors, with companies where we're potentially uh, collaborating with, like on co-producing with the investors now, and and the whole process is like we turn up like I don't know, like you you turn up at uh, you know grandma's or your aunt's house on a Sunday uh, and it's all that food like that's how we go to meetings now it's like try this try that try. And it's, it's good fun for everyone and it's cool we enjoy how, it. how is the feedback so far from uh... our feedbacks good I mean like as well you're asking me at the right time because uh, yeah a couple of years ago the first responses were like what's this you know because we, <laughs> we we were like it's chicken can't you tell and they're like no this isn't chicken and like now we literally do like blind testing with, we give them, we were introduced to people a week ago now as a, as a chicken, as so, a meat company. Um, we did a little prank. It's like the best way as well, just to get people to ha not have any preconceptions. So they said, these guys are from a chicken company. They're trying out some new recipes, try it out. So we did things like with gyros, we did like uh, our tenders like in a wrap, we did bao buns, all this stuff. And everyone was just like, oh, it's great. This, they're talking about more the flavors, bypassing the fact that this isn't true. They took it, but it was uh, a given that it was chicken. And at the end, we tell them it's not actually chicken, it's plant-based. And they're like, no way. And, you know, and it's fun because that's what you want. Like, we've said this from the start, right? So people say like, why do you make a product that tastes just like... We, we, Chicken's actually, <laughs> on numbers, it's actually one of the most efficient meats, let's say, to produce when you take away all the environmental and everything else. But just on like um, calorie conversion, mm -hmm. you, you can get like, you still need to put nine calories in to get one calorie out of chicken. I mean, if you take like the feed directly um, and then you have like lamb and beef that go up to 30, 40 times as much. Whereas for us, it's like a one-on-one. -on -one. It's like you take a calorie, you make a calorie. And our argument is if we can make something that tastes the same, that has the same protein, that's better for you, that's better for the environment, then the choice should hopefully eventually be quite simple. Again, at least a couple of times a week, we're not coming in and saying, I'm not gonna like open up your fridge and steal everything and say, no, you can't, you can eat what you want. It's our job to kind of give you great choices. And then we think if we give you the stuff, especially that we have like on the table now, then you're gonna say, screw it, I'm gonna eat this a couple of times a week and be super happy. Wow. Yeah. I, I saw your, um, the, the prank thing that you did. I wasn't sure if it was real chicken in the picture or if it was yeah. mixed or if it was on your products. So. Yeah. Pictures are easier to, <laughs> to kind of mess around with, but like the live thing's so much fun. Um, yeah, it was good. Great, um, where do you see this going? Like when, when we go now to the stores, we see a huge fridge of regular meat. Yep. And then you see a very small place dedicated to these products. Yeah. Where do you see this going in the future? Oof. I think the, the natural evolution, it's funny because you can't see sometimes, well, it always starts like this. Uh, if you take any product that started early, like not a lot of people could say that, oh, this is going to be huge in 10, 15 years time. You know, the jokes with like BlackBerry making fun of early smartphones and stuff like that, Blockbuster making fun of Netflix. But I, I don't know if we'll go all the way. I mean, like this is a bold prediction, but I think if you look at the last 15 years when plant-based milk, you know, you just look mm -hmm. at plant-based milk, it started at like 0.1% in the first couple of years of the market. It's like US, UK now, it's now 20, 22% of all milk. You know, it's insane. So that's in 15 years. And, and now we're at a stage where like, I think there's a, there's like a universal uh, alignment, consciousness of kind of that we need to shift some of our choices. I mean, we hear the argument all the time about food choices and wanting like more sustainable ones. And I, I know like we, as human beings, like we can be omnivorous. And again, like I said, it's our, it's our choice. Like it, it's our job to put choices on the table and not guide you. But for sure, even in our omnivorous form, we're not supposed to eat meat like four times a day. 
So it's like, again, it's one of those things that we want to just like not get you to sacrifice on flavor, on taste, on texture, but just on, you know, the raw material mm -hmm. in a way. So I think it can go, yeah, like next decade, I'm sure we'll push up to, to levels of plant-based milk. I'm sure, you know, you can never be sure. I'm making a bold prediction. But like, I, I think we'll push up to that, like kind of 20% uh, mark, potentially more. I think cultivated meat's coming as well. Uh, we'll see in scale up. I think that'll take a chunk. And, and then we'll see, like, I, I think, yeah, we'll, we'll get to somewhere where there's just like a lot more products on the market. Uh, there's a lot more people working on the space now as well. So there's a lot more developments. Like we have like different uh, raw material bases. We have different kinds of products coming out. So it's exciting. It's a, it's a cool space right now. Yeah, I've seen like many franchises are also having at least one option of uh, a meat alternative in their menu. Yeah, they're trying. If there's any out there that need chicken and they don't have yet, we yeah. can, <laughs> can help already. They know who to call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's great. Um, so um, yeah, you've been doing all this from here again, and yep. um, doing it from Cyprus as a Cypriot entrepreneur. Do you see any obstacle challenges or any opportunities? Ha yeah, to make it happen from here. Because it's like the forever kind of conversation about Cyprus in general. There's like good and bad in everything, right? So it's like wherever you are, there's good and bad stuff. And for here, I think it's just about. I think we. I don't know, maybe I'm being critical, like cynical, but we, we like, we enjoy the excuses because it's a good, it's a good reason not to, not to try. Uh, <laughs> we, but the truth is there's so much, there's so many advantages and then you can kind of hedge against the stuff, like the disadvantages. I said this last, uh, recently as well, like I was saying that there's, unless you're looking for insane amount of early capital or you know if there, if there's a technology or something if there's if there's machinery that you need that's not here on the island if it's but 95 percent of any business that you're probably thinking about starting now you can start from here uh we even for us so the funny thing for us as well is like we're, we're a physical product company now we have like a deep technology base but our plan from the start was like screw it we're going to do it from here and then when we need to do trials and scale up, if it's not available locally, which it wasn't, like we our partners are out in, in Western Europe, we'll just fly. And then the first lockdown happened, it was like super weird because it was the first time ever we couldn't fly anywhere for a few months. And so we actually started doing even our first scale up trials, we started doing uh, remotely. So by video, and then we would like direct the process and then we'd get stuff sent over to us and we'd try and so on. So it was it was quite, like yeah it was it was tough i guess at the beginning but yeah the advantages are i think super low cost compared to other places of getting started there there are workspaces there's like you know even with here the the base as well there's a bunch of other spaces you can work there's coffee shops and cafes and and you can get started from like anywhere um there's a decent local like ecosystem building as well you have everything you need i mean we even began like a lot of our early networking, we just did through LinkedIn. I mean, we had a bit of a network ourselves already, but again, just you know, reach out to people, ask for introductions and so on. So yeah, there's no real excuse, I don't think anymore. And you know, we always look for speaking about this with the team as well the other week and saying like how, but we need funding. And I think this is one of the biggest barriers to, to even starting. People think they need money before they need money. And it's just like get started, and then once you start investing some of your time and and your own funds into something, you'll start seeing where you actually need money, and then you'll be surprised. Like there's, especially for like really early capital, I think you can find that here. And yeah, you've you've don't have a lot of excuses. I think for getting started, at least it's been a challenge, but it's like you know you ask. Yeah, again, like just talking about the same question out of London, like somebody say to you, like, I have like extremely high, like ran um, access to talent, super competitive. People are on like 80, 90 K, you know, versus here, whereas like, you know, you get like similar talent for a third of that. There's challenges everywhere. Um, yeah, I just think just get started and, and you can build it here, probably. <laughs> well, you've been doing it, so it seems like yeah. it's working. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I've. Yeah, I love. I like that you said that because we we hear many people say hey, it doesn't happen here. We don't have this. We don't have that. But actually, the the real point, as you said, it's that 
if you're gonna be an entrepreneur you also need to have that mindset you yeah. need to try be a go-getter and find a way like yeah. there's a pandemic do it online <laughs> you need to reach out to somebody use the tools use linkedin don't say that this person doesn't exist so yeah. i'm not gonna do it yeah. so that was that was a very very good point and you're showing it by example you're not just saying it yeah. and it's the what third time yeah like uh, the last decade in our third company it's going to be the best one i'm sure <laughs> we're sure too and thank you so much yep. this was great thank you for sharing thanks your guys thank you for having me it's insights. been fun thanks this podcast is brought to you by science former rise the research center of excellence in cyprus focusing on interactive media smart systems and emerging technologies for more information, please check our website on science.org.cy.